Bonjour mon petit chef Fleur Amber here and happy Black History Month! Uh, black y'all and I'm black y'all and I'm blacker than black and I'm black y'all and I'm black y'all and I'm black y'all and I'm blacker than black and I'm black y'all I'm blickety black blacker than black black I'm blacker than black yo because I'm black and I'm black Yo, I'm black and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black as you're black and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black as you're black and I'm black, y'all. Yes, say it's February 1st. It is the first day of Black History Month. It is also the first day of Blackathon. So that is why we're here. Um, well, this is a reading vlog, but it's also my Blackathon vlog because I'm taking part this year. This is the first, I think this is the second year of Blackathon, but the first year that I'm participating. If you don't know, it Blackathon is a like an Afrocentric readathon in, um, in honor of Black History Month. It was created by Jesse or Rumbo Ties and Books. It's hosted by Jesse as well as the novel Lush. And there are a bunch of fun challenges to be done. A really fun, uh, I'm on the team uh, sci-fi fantasy. So I didn't make a TBR because my computer and I are not seeing eye to eye right now and I didn't feel like struggling to edit the video so I did post my TBR. Oh, by the time you see this it'll be over anyway so it doesn't even matter. So the first challenge for let's try this again. So the first book that I'm reading for Blackathon and for the month is the weight of the weight of the stars by K. Ancrum, and this will complete the challenge of the Janelle Monae challenge, which is read a LGBTQIA plus um, sci-fi fantasy book with a black protagonist. So, I'm really excited to read this book. I've heard absolutely amazing things about it. I love this. What I know of this book briefly is that the main character dreams of going to space or something but a career in space is not in the future in the cards for her she's from the wrong side of town and then she starts so she like kind of falls into that role starts acting out and then she meets another girl who we find out her mom um is volunteered as part of a one-way trip to is it mars and so every night she um like climbs up to hear radio on the roof to hear radio me messages from her um and it's kind of like their relationship and I think I'm not sure but I think this might be told in verse which is exciting and also might make for a speedy read so um yes I will see you a bit later Hello, I'm irritated. Today is February 3rd. It's about 60 degrees outside and how did I want to spend my day? You know, out enjoying the weather. How did I spend my day? I haven't spent a day. I was gone for maybe not even a full, not even a full hour, but sitting on a, a sidewalk, puking up coffee and water was not my idea of a good time. It's still not. Panic attacks are lit. <laughs> And now I am back home trying to recover. My hands are still really shaky um, and I'm freezing. But that, all that being said, I have about 50 pages left of The Weight of Our Stars. And I was doing fine, just breathing through until I got to about page 277. And then I became like an emotional mess. Um, the end of the story is really like kind of like bittersweet. I don't know how it's going to end, but I'm just like... Wow, I'm, I'm in it now. So my plan for the day is to now finish reading this book. And what I'm loving doing is playing like space ASMR because like a lot of the plot has to do with space. So it's like space sounds. There's like a whole album from NASA with space sounds. So it's really helps me focus on what I'm reading. So I'm tired. Okay, let's try this again. Hello. Hi! Yep, it's been two days since the incident and I'm finally trying to go back up to Michael's to get my stuff and honestly I still feel a little um, iffy. Not feeling, it's like when I have big 
attacks like that. They always set off minor ones, so hopefully I get on the bus this time. I think I see it coming, so that's a step in the right direction, even though I get motion sick. So, ooh, this is gonna be fun. Have I updated since I finished this book? I'm not sure, but I finished this book in like three days and I really loved it, especially towards the end. This was a lot more, more and different than I expected it to be. For the first like good chunk of the book, I was just kind of like coasting through like, oh, okay, this is a nice, quick, fun read. I love space um, and the idea of space travel. But like the more towards the end, I really got like, it really kind of hit me in my chest. I got about, what was it? I got to page 277 and then I was just like weeping to the time I closed the book and the author's note just kind of, yeah, this was more than I thought it would be. It was so good. I, I really loved all of the characters. I, lo I love me a found family in a book. Uh, I think there's like that, I think I include that trope in every single one of my <laughs> books that I'm writing. But also, this, like I just mentioned, I love, I've always loved space. And I think this kind of reminded me of that. And just like, because like, I don't read sci-fi really. I read, definitely read more fantasy in the sci-fi fantasy genre. But I think, I think I'm ready to start maybe exploring more into the, the sci-fi, at least where it comes to uh, space and like space travel because that was my vibe growing up. I was known for like my knowledge of the galaxy and just, I wanted to work, I wanted to be an astronaut for a while, like for a long time. Cool. And now I'm about a hundred pages into a river of royal blood. I've been reading this for a couple of days now and I've just gotten to page a hundred. It's taken me a bit of a minute to, um, kind of really get into it and connect with it and find a rhythm but I'm really I think I'm starting to to vibe with this book or at least be able to consistently read it it's very much giving me three dark crowns vibes it also reminds me a lot of the candle in the flame by Nafisa Azad um I can't really explain how without spoiling the situation that the characters are in right now but the connection between um Fatima Fatima Gazala in that book and Zulfikar is very much like what just happened in this book and what's going on in this book so um I'm really interested to see how that plays out and I'm interested to see how things work out between these sisters hello so I have maybe a little over 100 pages almost exactly 100 pages left of a river of royal blood and y'all i i just don't know i just don't know i am on page 221 and i still feel like nothing has happened there have been things that have happened in the book but nothing that feels consequential nothing that seems to matter it almost still feels like we're still building up to something happening in the book and I'm almost finished it I don't feel any real connections between any of the characters I feel like I'm being forced to feel certain way about characters that aren't like really feeling authentic really also this whole book is hyped up to be about this rival heir situation and this fight to the death between Ava, Eva, and her sister, but like she's barely interacted with her sister in this book. And um, when I picked it up, it I, I was like, "Ooh, this is giving me sort of like a Three Dark Crown sort of vibe." But in words only, it's really not. And I just feel like, like I guess I feel like nothing's really happening. And I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I also feel like I spend a lot of time floating through the book where I'm not skimming. I promise I'm not skimming on purpose. But then I'll realize like I didn't process anything that I read in a paragraph. So I have to go back and reread it. I don't know if it's me. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, 
I'm watching Teen Wolf. We finally reached 3B, so. Amen. Hello. So, I don't know if I have let you all know that I have finished reading A, Roy A River of Royal Blood. And I have, um, by the time this goes up, my, I've just uploaded my review of said book. Um, because I just, you ever read a book and then you know that if you don't talk about it and get all your thoughts off your chest, you'll never be able to move on. That was one of these. I was really disappointed. I wanted to love it. And then it just, it wasn't what I was expecting. I gave it like a three out of five stars when I just knew it was going to be a five out of five stars anywho I am now because I wanted to break up the fantasy and sci-fi books reading Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson finally I have been this book has been on basically every monthly TBR or monthly like oh I need to read some books um since I read allegedly last year the year before last I'm about I'm how far am I into this book I am 133 pages into this book and first and foremost the all the adults in this book are making me so mad too so Monday and Claudia are younger than I thought they would be and it's just so it's not weird but like for me I'm like were people like this when I was this age and I just wasn't aware but I'm at this part where <laughs> Monday just hit a boy in the face with her school books and I shouldn't have laughed but I did and now all I can hear is Tiffany Jack Tiffany going but did you die though <laughs> and that's what I keep saying to Jacob but did you die though I'm really enjoying this book so far. It's a little, not confusing, but a little confusing because the storyline isn't linear. It hops around from, through different points in time, but um, I'm not, I don't think, I, but I'm still enjoying it. So nothing that I just sent me since. Hello, it's cold and I don't feel well, um, but I'm in the last 100 pages, I have like 100 pages left of Monday's Not Coming and I don't know if this is like the plot twist but a plot twist is happening. The whole plot's about to be shaken up and I had to put the book down last night because I knew that if I didn't force myself to stop reading I would have been up reading until I finished the book and I didn't want that. So, I am nervous to see what's about to happen and which way Tiffany is about to mess me up. <coughs> I'll check back in a little later. Wait, what is happening right now? Where's my bookmark? <laughs> but that makes sense. I gotta finish reading this book. <laughs>
happy Valentine's Day or whatever. Um, I just got in. It is so disgustingly cold outside. And so I'm just like cold and sore and tired. But to go out and do like work stuff. And while I was out, I spent Valentine's Day as the Lord intended for me at Target buying things that I didn't need. Treat, treat yourself. Got some some bits from Target and Sephora. And I got a new phone case from TJ Maxx. Um, oh, that's not even what I was supposed to come to say. I'm supposed to be talking about reading. So I have... I can't say that I've recovered from Monday's Not Coming because I absolutely have not. But I have moved on in honor of Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day, Palentine's Day, whatever you want to call it. I uh, have picked up or started reading, picked up my Kindle, and I started reading a romance. I'm currently reading, is it called Princess in Theory? Is that the one by Alyssa Cole, which is the first in the Reluctant Royal series? I'm not that far into it. Only like a couple pages in. The story hasn't really started yet, but I am excited to see how this story plays out. Um, if you don't know, I read the third one in the series, uh, Prince on Paper, a couple months ago. Absolutely loved it. Obsessed with it. So I'm hoping, and then I decided to start from the beginning so I can understand how this little world operates. So I'm hoping that I love this as much as that one. My arms hurt and my knee is killing me. So I'm gonna sit down, get under some covers, eat a sandwich, and read my book. That's not focus. I don't know if you can hear me, because I'm really close, but I am currently sitting in Starbucks. I just had to go do work stuff. I'm once again CPR certified. So now I'm going to treat myself to a matcha latte and then I gotta go to Target because I have to exchange some pants but I haven't filmed anything because I haven't been feeling well so Station. For connections to Septi Regional Rail, 
Okay, hello. So the last time I was talking to you was yesterday on the train and I was uh, going into the final chunk of Daughters of Inri. I have since finished the book. I am still kind of sitting with with it and trying to really determine what I think about it. I one realized I think I would like it better if I if I had listened to the audiobook because the way it's written kind of feels like a story is like a like a like a word of mouth story is being told sort of like um like how usual fables or folklore is passed down um so I feel like that's the vibe I got from it so I would have probably enjoyed it more if I had listened to it also I did listen to a sample on audible of the book and I do like the the narrator so I might eventually not this month I don't have time but in the future I think I will give it a second chance I just I don't know I, I don't know but I don't want to sit down and do a whole other review I'm not, I don't want to make it a habit of negatively reviewing every book I read and I just I don't anyway because now we're in the final almost a month week of Blackathon I do still need to finish the fifth season but that's kind of chunky and and like he not heavy but like it's a lot to consume and process so I will be reading it also but kind of to um I guess have like a filter between fantasy books and like or is this sci-fi between like this type of like extravagance i am now going back to another contemporary i am reading finally jackpot by nick stone um who i absolutely adore i've had this book just chill out for months i think i got it the day it came out from books of wonder and i have yet to read it so it's time and I think I can get through it quickly. I usually read Nick's books really quickly so here's hoping. I managed to get a signed copy. Um, yeah. Yeah this should be a quick read. Also about this just reminded me about Daughters of Henry. I think a problem also is because like the chapters are so short and they alternate between the sisters. I didn't have time to really like get to know a sister before it hopped to the other one. Dis like despite the fact that I think they were kind of flat characters but anyway hello I'm back again because I just realized like part of me wonders if the way they're written like the flatness is intentional almost because they are separated for majority of the story so like I wonder if they'll become fuller versions of themselves when they're together when they've been reunited like have their magic magicking just a thought I don't know hello I am currently about to go out to lunch with Claire <laughs> so it's nice out for once and thank the Lord Jesus hello we're in the bathroom sorry it's gonna be really echoey but like I just said we're in the bathroom and I'm just trying to get my contacts out of my eyeballs and get a little makeup I have left off of my face but oh god I'm so tired I did I just wanted to talk about just give a recap because I know I I, uh, I made an attempt to sorry if you don't want to see me take my contacts out I probably will look a little hold on I started to film some content today when I was going out with my friend Claire um but I didn't aside from aside from that one clip where I was walking down the stairs but I had a really fun day with her I have to bring my solution all right um we went to lunch or yeah we went to lunch we just went and got some um bubble tea and popcorn chicken and 
it was just really nice to catch up. We've been friends basically since high school. We haven't seen each other in over a year. So I think we're gonna make an effort to hang out more. Please remember to go get your solution so those don't dry out. Um, we already set a hangout date for next month also. So I just wandered around a little bit and then came back and I, I'm just been sitting here all day with contacts in my eyes and makeup on after almost blinding myself trying to put my contacts in this morning. But I'm on page like 207-ish of Jackpot and I'm really enjoying it. It is so fun. Rico and Zan are adorable. Their banter is top notch. They're I spent a lot of this book giggling and laughing and just, I love them together. Um, I'm really, like I said, I'm really enjoying the story and it's very, it's actually really, really like a really lighthearted story. I just spent a lot of it like laughing and feeling all warm fuzzy, but there are some sort of heavy topics touched on. I think the conversation is really interesting important and important especially regarding like um money and class and just um sorry and eyelash in my eye kind of like how the world is perceived differently for people based on your economic standing um and how you know kids that should be planning for their future have to grow up so early a lot of what Rico a lot of Rico's life is very um relatable but yes I feel like some big things are about to happen some drama is probably going to kick off soon and if I weren't so exhausted if my eyes were barely open I probably would stay up to finish reading. I'm probably not even gonna like properly wash my face and do my skincare because I'm just so tired. Um, yes, I will. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I want to say. I don't think anything I'm saying is really making a lot of sense, but I just wanted to I'll see you tomorrow. Hello. Oh, that's not my face. Hello. It is March 4th. My half birthday is tomorrow. And I have not closed out this vlog. So the last time I was talking to y'all in the bathroom, I was almost finished jackpot. Finished jackpot. Absolutely loved it. The ending was bittersweet, but I understand that it was necessary and realistic. I just wish that there was more that's n that I got like an epilogue or like, I don't know, Nick could just personally tell me what happened afterwards. Um, I also wish I had a little bit more of Zan's backstory. So after that, I actually finally finished reading Black Enough. I started reading that collection of short stories was it February or March of last year? I'm mean, gonna put it down to focus on some readathon, but I finally finished it. And um, read um, short story anthologies are kind of hard to really judge or discuss, but I, for the most part, as a whole, I enjoyed it. I really enjoy um, different stories, like different walks of life within the Black community, because we are not all the same. So yeah, that that was. Blackathon. That was Black History Month. That was February. And now, like I said, we're into March. So I'm probably going to, I'm, I've decided I'm going to do my March vlog a little differently because honestly, I don't really feel like March vlogging. I am not feeling great right now, but I'm going to do something. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this monstrosity, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, feel free to subscribe. All my places are down here so you can follow me and I'll follow you back. And I'll see you very soon.